Great, so we're making good progress here. We've got the header of the BBC News webpage pretty much intact. We've got the menu options. We've got the, um, the logo up here, RSS search. It's all looking pretty nice. So now we're going to um, fill in um, a little bit more content. We're going to look to um, complete this bit here. So the actual uh, the news headline and the watch listen um, bar over here. I'm not going to do the whole of the content of the page, otherwise this video would be many, many hours long. But um, if you want to do it as an exercise, that would be great. Um, and please do let me know if you do. Um, I'd be really keen to, to see what you've done. But we'll just go as far as these two bits here. Okay, so let's start with um, adding a new div for um, this whole content here. So we're going to need um, another fixed width div in the middle, um, and then we'll start adding the um, the date and last updated text there. Okay, so let's go back over to our text. Nice. Um, so we want to get the news bar and fixed width divs copied down. Okay, um, and this one will change the ID to content. So if we copy down the news bar styles for now and change them to content. Okay, so we've got a copy of this um, news background there. Now this time we don't want to specify the height um, because we just want it to be a variable height depending on how, how tall the content is. We also don't want a background color because the background color is just white and we also um, don't want to set the text color to white. Um, now it looks to me like most of the text is not actually black so let's select that text color from the bold text there. Okay, generally stylistically speaking um, black is usually avoided as a, um, a color of text or a color where anywhere on a web page it's, it's usually looks a bit better if you use um, a dark gray rather than a, a black. So let's just put in a bit of text there. Okay, fine, looking good. So um, now this is indented a little bit too much. I suspect that's because we haven't cleared the floats. So let's put in a break div there to clear that. And now we're on the left. That's nice. OK, so let's get this in first. Now all this text is actually looking a little bit smaller than that test text there. So what I'll do is I'll go up here and we'll change the content font size to something like 0.8 EM and we'll go from there. So let's copy in this text here. We'll put it oops, right in in the div as a P tag. See how that looks. Okay, not too bad. Um, a little bit large, possibly. Um, yeah, I think we might make it just a touch smaller. Maybe 0.75. Okay, great. And of course, we've got bold text there. We could just put um, strong tags in, um, but as we're focusing on CSS here, let's do it as a span um, and we'll call it, we'll give it a class of date. So I've chosen class just in case we do have another date further down, but it's likely that there's only one, so you could just about use ID there as well. So we just want font weight to be bold. Great. Okay. Now this um, 
this uh, headline here, we definitely want to be a header. Um, so let's make this an H1 because it's our big header for the page. And let's copy and paste that text in. Slash H1. Okay, not too bad. We obviously need to change the color. So let's get let's get our color. Great. So we need an H1 selector. We'll change the color to that. So now we've got the color. I think it needs to be a bit larger. So let's try a font size of 1.3 EMs. Oops, no, too small. Um, 3 EMs. A little too large. 2. Well, a little too small. 2.5. That's about right. I think that looks good. Okay. Now we'll grab this image. We're not going to do this um, rotating image um, system that they've got there. That requires a bit of JavaScript, so we'll look at that sort of thing in the next chapter. But for now, we'll just right click and save that image. So we'll put it in the desktop, my websites, CSS, and we'll call it headline image. Okay, there it is. Notice it's a headline image.jpg. It's used the same extension that was used on the um, original site. So, and um, we'll have to remember that is not a PNG. So, headline image.jpg. Okay, so let's put it in straight away as an image. SRC is images slash headline image dot JPEG. Self closing. Okay, that's nice. The spacing looks about right to me. Now we're going to want the um, this paragraph text to be to the right of that image. So we definitely want to float that image to the left. So let's give it a particular class. We can call it headline image. And we'll float that image to the left. Okay, it doesn't make any difference yet because we haven't got any content to use otherwise. So let's put a p tag in and put in this text. Okay, right, so it's in the right place, um, but it hasn't quite done what we want it to do. Um, we want it to, to scroll down here, and we're also going to want a, a bit of padding between the two as well. So I think it's worth putting um, this p tag and actually this lot here as well into um, its own div so that it all lines up nicely. So let's do that. So we'll have a class div this time because we might want to use this further down um, of let's say news item. And then we'll just indent that P, space it all out nicely, close that div. So what are we going to do with news item? Well, we definitely want to give it a, um, a bit of padding. So let's just have a look. So just for a bit of fun, instead of using padding, let's use um, relative positioning instead. So we can set the position to be relative and then give it that margin on the left of 10 pixels. 
Oops, not positive. Position. Nice. Okay, and then we definitely want to set a width as well so that it wraps round. Let's try a width, a width of 150 pixels. That's a little. Okay, when we set that, that actually moves the whole thing down um, underneath the image, um, which we don't want. So let's float it left as well. That has the effect of moving it down a little bit. So we've already got our relative position up there. So let's just shift it back up a little bit. Nice. In fact, the text here is very slightly above the image. So let's go a little bit further. Move it maybe 15 pixels up. There we go. Um, I also think that it's a little bit small. So let's change the font size to be, let's try 1.3 EMs, a little too large, maybe just 1.1. That'll do, and we definitely want to increase the width a fair bit, so let's try 200 pixels, and that looks good, but I think we can go a bit further, maybe even 300. A little too much. Great, I think that looks pretty good. Excellent. So now let's um, add these links in down here. Now all of them are going to have this image here. So let's select that and take a screenshot, we'll call it triangle, and we'll drag it into our images folder. Let's bring everything back. Sorry. There we go. And now these are all links, and they're a slightly different color to the rest, so um, let's make them links and, and deal with that. So to make it a link, we give it an href. We don't care where it goes, we're just interested in how this all looks. So let's paste in our text there, close the link close the paragraph. Wire pollution level so high, okay. Um, great, now we want to definitely get those the right color. Looks to me like it might well be the same color as the H1. Um, but we'll take it directly from there. So this is news item, all the links in this section will have that color. So let's pop that in. Great, so it's the right color. Um, it is underlined, so, and we don't want that. So we need to get rid of the underline. So we do that by using text decoration none. However, these links quite nicely um, underline when, when you hover over them. So that gives us an opportunity to use our hover pseudo selector. You remember that one? So then we just add in the text decoration underline. There we go. And that then nicely underlines. Now we could just put this in as an image and that would be fine, but um, I quite like the idea of having a particular class that will automatically put that image in for us. So let's do that. Um, we can't do it, unfortunately, for just having all, Im all links having that image because there's a couple that have a different image. So we'll deal with those separately. Um, but for this one, we'll give it, let's give it a class 
of video. And then up here, we can create a video class. And we can use the background image that we used for the search div up here. So let's copy and paste that because we're going to need most of it in some form or another. So we want the background image to be triangle.png. We want it left centered and not repeated. Okay, great. So that's in the right place, but we're going to have to move the text a little bit to the right. So let's put a bit of padding on the left um, to achieve that, maybe 15 pixels. Okay, that's worked, but it's not enough. 20 pixels. Great. That looks pretty nice. So that's nice. That's separated out the image from the, the content here. So we've got a, another couple of video links. We'll just copy the text over from those. I'll just bring that in so you can see it. Select that text. Sorry. That'll do. Great. Looking nice. Possibly slightly too spaced out there. Now there are a number of different things we could do to fix that, but I think one that's worth trying is instead of putting those in different paragraphs, let's put a line break in between. That brings them a bit closer together. And we'll get rid of that paragraph there as well. Okay, now they're possibly a little bit too close together now. So um, that gives us an opportunity to look at a new CSS uh, tool that we haven't used yet, which is line height. So let's give this a class of links. And then we can refer to links there and give it a line height of let's try 1.2 em uh, 2 em a little bit too much um let's try 1.5 uh what do we think uh, just a touch more maybe 1.6 you can play around with that to um to make it so that you like it but i think that looks about right Okay, we're doing well. So we've now just got another link to put underneath. This one is not a video link, so it's not going to have that class of video. But we want to keep it inside our paragraph, give it an href, but it doesn't matter where it goes. Okay, I forgot the line break. There, okay, great. And then we're going to need one more. I'll copy this one over. So it's going to be a very similar one, but I'm going to call it a class of, oh no, sorry, it's not camera, it's a sound image. So it's going to be um, extremely similar, except we're going to have the sound icon instead of the video one. Let's do the same thing there. Copy this into images and we'll call it sound. And then we're going to want to copy the video styles into sound and change everything, well keep everything the same apart from the background image. Let's move this back over here. 
tidy everything up. Great, okay, that's looking pretty good. Nice, so I'm happy with that. So we're on to the last bit now, um, and I'll stop here to keep this video from getting too long. And in the last video, we will create the right bar up here, the watch and listen.